My big idea is that in today's uncertain environment where change is ongoing, there's dynamic disruption all around us and we know the reasons why through things like the internet. The only way you can approach change in today's world is through what I call an emergent change approach. So what do I mean by an emergent change approach? Well, emergence has been studied in the field of living systems like biology or the natural world around us. And it demonstrates that systems can rapidly innovate to changes in their environment in a way where there's no chief executive officer calling the shots. How can that happen? Well, I've spent the last 15 years applying the theory of emergent change from the living sciences and putting that into practice in workplace change. And I have research to show that it actually leads to more successful change in today's world. So how do you do emergent change? And what I'm about to say now might actually sound quite counterintuitive, so get ready for this. The first thing with emergent change is give up any idea of having a fixed vision about the future, even if your people are demanding that. Emergent change works when you just have a very loose intention, a sense of direction that you need to take your company or your nation or whatever institution you lead to. And then you set some hard rules that guide the behaviour of people on the ground. For example, share information with your colleagues, respond to the customer. But within that loose intention and a set of hard rules, you then actually allow self-organisation. You empower your system to innovate in and of their own accord. But it does mean that you have to give up control and assume that there is natural intelligence in your organisation about what to do in the face of uncertainty. The next feature of emergent change is to work in a step-by-step -step way. Give up any idea of having a fixed long-term plan. The world now is so dynamic that the answer now might be outmoded in one year's time. So all you do is set the intention for what needs to happen in the next three to six months. Let's find out about that. And then when we get there, we'll look at the world. It's probably changed already. We'll then determine what we need to do next. So work step by step. And the final feature of emergent change is build connectivity and networks, both across your organisation, but also between your organisation and the outside world. Most innovation happens at the periphery of a system, not in the centre of the system, where it can be very, very comfortable. So build networks, put together teams from across different departments, have your leaders go out to visit new customer groups. So you stimulate what's called the lateral network. You don't need emergent change down through a cascade, down through the vertical hierarchy. You're activating cells of change across your organisation. Now, in my experience, Leading change in an emergent way goes against the grain. It goes against the grain of predicting what's going to happen, controlling your organisation. But you can command emergent change. You can foster the conditions that allows emergent change to naturally emerge in your company. And as I've said before, my research shows that in situations of high complexity, where the answer is not obvious, where you have to move very, very quickly, and my research has convincingly demonstrated that emergent change works best in today's environment. So my final advice to you, number one, be conscious as a leader that there are different ways of doing change. The how is fateful. So be aware of different ways of how you can do change. Number two, make a conscious decision as to which choice of change approach do you want to use in your organisation. And thirdly, be consistent and how you actually build the capability and the capacity for doing change across your organisation. So in summary, my big idea is what I call the three C's. Being conscious or aware that there are different ways of doing change. Usually we just do them in autopilot or default mode. Number two, make a choice, a conscious choice, as to how you want the change to be led in your organisation or in your nation or in your political party. And number three, to be very consistent in how you lead a change across the system and build skills in your organisation to do change in a different way. By shifting the how, you will actually get to a different outcome.